Erin. Uh, so hello to all of you and uh, a, a warm welcome to this uh, fifth webinar proposed by Jan Greventonk and uh, this time his uh, guest is uh, Karim Gassan, the Gavi. So um, hello, I'm Vasiliki, I'm part of the scholar team and uh, today I will be here with you for this fifth webinar. So we will still wait one or two minutes in order that all the attendees will connect, will be able to connect and be here with us. And at this moment, I would like to invite you, if you are using uh, your computer in order to have the Zoom, uh, the Zoom uh, to see the web, to watch the webinar, I would like to advise you to use the, the Menti. So go use your mobile to go to www dotmenti.com and then you can use the code 787046 and, and there you can connect and respond to the interactive questions that Jan will propose us during this webinar. So for example the first the first question the first question is what country are you connecting from? So if you can go to menti, menti www.menti.com and then use the code 787046, you can type the country that you are connecting from. Uh, so this is another website. It is not the application Zoom. And I would like to advise you, if it is your first time in a webinar, to use your mobile phone for the, for the Menti site and your computer for the Zoom. So I can see that uh, by now 26 participants have already figured out how to use the, uh, the Menti site. And uh, I can also see that many of you, you are, you are already using the chat room to type your name and your country. So at this point, I would like to say, to tell you that if you want really to see your country here in the slide deck, please go to the Menti site, www.menti.com, and then use the code 787046, and then type your country. So right now we have 40 people who have already used Menti, and we see India, Myanmar, Switzerland, Pakistan, and many other countries that you have already typed. So go to your phone. If you are using your computer for Zoom, go to your phone, type in your browser, so go to the website www.menti.com and then enter the code 787046 in order to vote and in order to write your country. So I would like to really make the separation between Menti, that is the website that we would like to advise you to use by your phone, and it is only for, for the interactive quizzes. So it is only some, when Jan really wants to ask you a question that you should re respond. And then we can see immediately your response, your response in the slide deck. So now the question that Jan has proposed is what country are you connecting from? And we can see many countries such as India, Nigeria, Cameroon, Pakistan, Syria, Burkina Faso, Tanzania, Bahrain, Ghana, eh, Uganda, Switzerland, Burundi, Mozambique, Greece, eh, South Sudan, USA, Afghanistan. So already 58 people have uh, typed their answers and their countries. And I would like you to continue doing this. So apart from this, I would like also to tell you that in the application Zoom, so in the main application for this webinar, in the bottom you can see the chat uh, button. So there is a button that is called, called chat and you can use the chat room uh, for any comment. If you wish to post your own questions during the webinar, 
I would like to advise you and to ask you to use the Q&A button. So the Q&A button is also a button that you will find in the Zoom application in the bottom, in the bottom, and please click on it if you want to write your own question. So we have two, one application, the Zoom application, the main application that we are using with the chat room and also with the Q&A button. The Q&A button is for your own questions. We also have Menti, an extra site that you can use with your mobile phone by typing the code 78746 and answer to the quiz, to the interactive questions that Jan is suggesting. So I can see that many of you, you have already used, used Menti, so that's good. I would like again to say a warm, a warm welcome to, to all of you. Welcome to this fifth webinar proposed by Jan Greventong. And uh, at this moment, I would like to say hello to Jan and uh, give him the floor. So hello, Jan. Yes, thank you very much, everybody. Um, good to see that uh, you're very uh, numerous again. We have 157 participants who already joined. Uh, 73 of you have found a way to Mentimeter, so that's great. Um, uh, so yes, so my name is Jan Grevenonk. I work in WHO in headquarters. Um, I uh, am also organizing the course on um, data improvement planning, so welcome also the scholars who are here. Uh, and today we have a special uh, invitee who is Karin at uh, Gavi. So Karin, um, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Hello, good morning to everyone. Welcome to the webinar. So I'm Karine Gachin. I'm working at Gavi in Geneva. I'm part of the m &E team and focal point for HMIS and uh, DHIS2. And I'm very happy for this invitation and hope we'll have a great moment together. And just to say, we have somebody from the country of Eswatini. It's the first time I actually see the name. So it's the new name, I think, for what used to be known as Swaziland. Welcome. Um, should we go to the ground rules? Yes. So at this moment, thanks a lot, Jan, and thanks a lot, Karin, for your uh, introduction. At this moment, I would like to remind to all of you, and if you are new to this webinar, to tell you the ground rules of your participation. So first of all, I would like to say, to tell you that your active participation is required. So we really want to encourage you to participate, to write your comments and your questions. So at this moment, I would like to say that if you wish to ask and to submit your questions, please do not use the chat room. Instead, use the Q&A room. So uh, you can find the Q&A button in Zoom at the bottom of the Zoom application. So please do not write your name or your comments in the Q&A room, but only your question. So once you write your question, other participants, they can vote in your questions or comment. So all the participants, I would like to invite you to open the, to open the Q&A button as well. If you have any question during the webinar, please type your question and then please also comment on the question of others. I would like also to tell you that it's really important to vote in the questions that you find the most interesting to be answered by Jan. So in order to vote, you will find a small like button like this in, a, in the bottom of each question. So if you wish that the, this question is really important, if you think that this question is really important for you and you, you want that this question to be asked, to be answered by Jan, please, a like, type the like button in the, in the, and vote for this question. And the questions that, are, that Jan will answer will be the most voted one. So at this moment, I would also like to remind you that you should not be disappointed if you are unable to answer, if we are unable to answer your questions. And of course, we will have many opportunities to discuss again, to talk again in the scholar community and also during the discussion group. And of course, I would like to remind you that you can use the 
the special the link that I'm going to send to you in order to find all the webinar resources. So this link, I'm also going to share it with you in the chat room. And uh, last but not least, when Jan is asking about uh, some questions, so some interactive questions, when he's proposing his quiz, please, at this time, you should go to the MIMPI, as you have already done, type the code, and answer to this interactive quiz. So at this moment, I would like to give again the floor to Jan. Thank you. Thank you, Vasiliki. Thank you, Vasiliki. So uh, quick agenda. So we have uh, we start with a, a little quiz like we always do. Uh, then we talk about what we consider to be the immunization monitoring system, what uh, the parts of that are. So I put actually systems. Uh, then Karin will actually talk a little bit more about a routine, a routine immunization module in DHIS2 which is kind of one of the uh, most um, uh, present or kind of most uh, implemented uh, health, inf health management information systems. Uh, we'll talk about five ideas on how to improve your monitoring system or your HMIS. And then we'll ask you to uh, share your experience uh, as we do in other of these webinars as well. Um, what, would you, what would we like uh, you to share especially? Like, uh, first of all, like um, if you're in a country that has kind of uh, recent experiences with kind of the implementation of an HMIS or improvements to their monitoring system, um, let us know, especially like these questions, like uh, what are the benefits and challenges of integration? Uh, how can EPI make sure that our program needs are met within the HMIS? Um, how can we achieve uh, effective collaboration between EPI and HMIS? Um, how can districts better use their HMIS? So for analysis, supervision, review, data quality checks, information sharing, et cetera. Um, how can we make sure that we design forms and entry screens uh, efficiently to minimize workloads? And how can we rethink uh, the work of the data manager? So if you're from a country, you know, like Bangladesh, like Ghana, like Nigeria, that we know are going through transitions uh, with, with HMIS, uh, please uh, share your uh, thoughts about this. Uh, put them in the Q&A, as Vasliki said, of the Zoom. And um, we'll take a few of the kind of most interesting ideas and the ones that are most liked to actually give you the floor at the end of this webinar to, uh, to, to present that to your colleagues and get feedback on that. Um, I also have like, and I forgot to put that in the agenda, but there will be one uh, short presentation by uh, a colleague from India uh, on the Indian HMIS. So we start with that uh, experience to start with to warm everybody up. Right. But first of all, um, I said we start with a little quiz. So I have a few questions for you. And the first question is, please go to menti.com and use the code 787046 for that, if you want to participate. And tell us which description fits your context best um, on how immunization data are being collected. Um, I'm just going to, there's somebody who makes noise, I'll mute her. Um, so is your system an integrated health information system? Is it, do you have both an immunization specific and an integrated system, so parallel systems, or do you have an immunization specific system? Um, and as we see here, uh, the one in the middle where you have both an immunization specific and an integration national HMIS, that is probably the most, um, uh, the most uh, common situation for all of you. I'll just give that a little bit uh, more time for you to vote on that. It's interesting for us also to see what you're thinking about this and, and what we're dealing with. So 15 people said we only have an integrated health information system. That is our basic, our only source. 44 people so far said we have both. And 13 people said we have immunization specific systems, but not an integrated uh, system. Right. That's very interesting. Thank you. So we have 81 people out of 190, so that's about half, so I'll move on with that. Um, and then also like the second question I would like to ask you is whether your system collects the data you need for immunization. So is all the data there? Um, whether your system is efficient and user friendly? And whether EPI and HMIS staff collaborate well in, in your country, whether, whether there's good collaboration. 
So you can actually pick uh, one, two, or three of these uh, answers to, 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 let, to let us know what you think is uh, the situation. And here I segmented this, this answer so you can see, for example, in blue are the ones who have only have integrated health uh, information systems. And you see they're a bit uh, equally split. Um, but most of them think that your uh, system collects the data you need for immunization. Uh, in yellow, we have uh, the people who um, have both systems at the same time. And in green, the people who think there's only an immunization specific system in their country, right? And let me just uh, talk a little bit about that. So most of you think actually that uh, the system collects the data you need for immunization. Well, if I say most, uh, we have 74 out of 140 who, who think that. So only about half things that you get all the data you need. Um, and from that, you see here the split between the different systems. Uh, not very many people think that the system is efficient and user-friendly, uh, especially I think the ones who have both systems probably don't think that there is kind of like lack of user-friendliness there. Uh, and um, only 31 think that uh, EPI and HMIS staff collaborate well in your country. So there is actually issues with HMIS and with systems, both in the data that you collect, uh, the, whether the system is efficient and user-friendly and whether uh, there's good collaboration. Actually, only 31 out of 147 think there is good collaboration. Right, so thanks for the little quiz. Let me just introduce the monitoring system. And just to say that I'm not going to dwell a lot on this slide, but just to say that um, this you can find back in the handbook with more explanation about that. Um, so what is the monitoring system? Well, we kind of, I, I put in that framework and it's a bit difficult to look at, but let me explain it. Uh, but we say that we can basically get data or indicators on four uh, domains of immunization. So we can have data on the inputs and processes. Uh, we can have them on the uh, inputs and processes, for example, the vaccines, the cold chain, uh, the funds, even the human resources. We can have data on the outputs. So whether uh, sessions are held, whether services, services are available and ready. And, and on the outcomes. So outcomes, whether the coverage is high that programs achieve, uh, in, in our case, that's mostly the one that we look at. We can also look at the impact of our program, which is kind of more the disease oriented part, whether there's a lot of vaccine preventable diseases. Um, and then you can do that also through different systems. Now there's three ways of looking at that. You can look at it through your administrative system. So your uh, monitoring system, as we call it, you can do it through kind of some kind of periodic service service and you can do it through uh, enhanced surveillance as we call it. And here in the middle, you see all the data that you get out of these three kinds of systems. So first to say that if we talk about the HMIS or the parallel system, the monitoring system, we mostly talk about that administrative system. So the HMIS or your parallel system at least will um, collect uh, information about administrative vaccinations, the number of doses you get. Um, so that's, that's always there. That's the core of, of most HMISs. Um, but there's also a few uh, monitoring systems and even HMISs that collect data on, for example, vaccine availability and use, on whether sessions are held or not, uh, and uh, disease surveillance, especially the aggregated kind of disease surveillance where you have the numbers of vaccine preventable disease, diseases. So not uh, case by case, but aggregated. There's a different kind of system which could be considered part of that monitoring system, which is the logistics management information system, uh, the LMIS. So this manages logistics data, so vaccines, cold chain, equipment, warehouses, temperatures, all these kind of things. Um, that is more of a management system than a monitoring system. So you're not really just collecting data, but you're really kind of placing in orders and, and things like that. And finally, of course, you have the case-based surveillance system uh, for priority diseases mostly, like polio, like, like measles and rubella, sometimes meningitis, uh, yellow fever, uh, in a sentinel site way for rota and pneumo, where you actually uh, collect data for vaccine-preventable diseases case by case. So this can be standalone, as it is mostly the case, or it can be part of your HMIS platform. Um, right. 
And then with that being said, so now that we talked about what the monitoring system is, um, let's take a quick part also, a quick, a quick uh, quiz again, and let us know what you think are the most important requirements for a monitoring system. Do you think it's most important that your system collects and managements, manages all essential programmatic data? Uh, should we get good outputs like reports, dashboards to facilitate analysis? Should it provide built-in checks for validation of data? Um, should it provide mechanisms to share uh, import and export data? Uh, and what do you think about good governance, clear responsibilities, the fact that everybody has access? Um, what do you think is most important? So for this, again, go to menti.com. And here we ask you to kind of um, distribute 100 points. So we give you 100 points and you can distribute them on these uh, different things uh, according to what you think is most, most important. Uh, Jan, so at this moment, uh, as participants, uh, they are already responding to Menti. So mm -hmm. you can go to Menti, type, use the code 787046, and then type your response as you did uh, with the previous questions. Jan, I would like to ask you uh, one of the most voted questions. So one question from Muhammad Mazar Curacy. If a DPD surveillance can be part of HMIS system? Uh, yes, it can be part. In some cases it is. And especially like what we see a lot is that the aggregated uh, part of the disease surveillance, like the numbers of uh, cases by disease, that's often a part of what, what in some places is called the IDSR, the Integrated uh, Disease Surveillance System um, or reporting, uh, which can be part of the HMIS. Uh, what we see much less is that the case-based uh, system is also part of that HMS, but even that uh, could be part of the HMS. It is not always the case. Okay, so thanks a lot. And uh, if we have time for another for a second question, Alain Blaise is asking if uh, HMIS is adapted for developing countries where we know there is a poor network connection or how can developing countries tackle that issue? Yes, that's a very good question. Uh, so um, HMS doesn't need to be necessarily online, but the, the thing is that, for example, a lot of them like DHIS2, they are. Uh, so yes, this is a, an issue. It might be an issue in many countries um, that actually uh, is not that easy to overcome. But what we would say is that if there's one HMS where every program puts in the resources and helps with the infrastructure and the connectivity, then um, it often gets uh, solved. So in most countries, this is actually uh, less and less of a bottleneck. So there is some kind of connectivity in, in most cases. Now, what I would say is that I would still be careful about that because even if there is connectivity at district level and people manage to upload the data, uh, not everybody thinks um, uh, there's good enough connectivity necessarily, for example, to, to really go in and look at dashboards, download data, et cetera. So uh, it is an ongoing issue, but it's getting better and better. All right, then maybe also like look at the requirements. So as you say, like, and a lot of you have um, provided feedback and, and there's not much uh, differentiation. And I think you're right, all of these are important. Uh, for us, the most important requirements is that HMIS indeed uh, collects and manages, manages all essential programmatic data, that there's some kind of uh, good outputs and an analysis uh, Built-in checks for validation of data is also important. Good governance is actually very important and it's often overseen. So to be able, everybody being able to access uh, it being clear responsibilities, even for example, having uh, mechanisms to know, for example, when you change the HMS, when new vaccines are introduced, all of these things need to be uh, well-defined. And then finally, some mechanism to share import and export data between different applications or for different uh, reporting um, uh, needs. Uh, all right, I'm ha having two more slides and I'm going to hand it over to Karin. Um, just to say, talk a little bit more about this integrated versus parallel system. So um, I would say that EPI has a complicated history with HMIS. Um, so EPI often has systems that predate the HMIS uh, that are well established and that are often um, um, Quite, quite well used and, and understood by people. Um, however, we also see that change is happening and that we need to be prepared for that change. And I'll we'll leave it to uh, Karin actually to show a few more slides to that. Uh, but at the same time, we also see that there's barriers to integration. 
And what I would say is that most of these barriers are actually not technical, but they're uh, governance related. So what we see if like there's, if there's integration that doesn't work well, we see often that uh, not all EPI indicators are included, um, that there's no process to agree on changes, um, that there's lack of access for um, EPI staff, for example, even to the HMS, lack of collaboration sometimes. Um, we in EPI also have a culture where there's kind of review points at the district level. And often what happens with uh, DHIS2 is that intermediary levels can be skipped because you just upload data directly from the health facility or from the district. And then the region, for example, doesn't have the oversight come to the review, come to the checkoff. So that's also kind of uh, an important issue for governance. Um, we also see, see sometimes that the outputs are not always that useful for us or we don't recognize them or it's not something we're used to seeing. Uh, and as maybe Alain was pointing to that, um, we have been relying on, on offline systems which are limited in that, that kind of data flows less uh, fast and everything, but at least the data is in somebody's hands who can use it and who can actually manipulate the data, who can make graphs and everything. And, and that's also something to be considered. Um, what is, so what is our recommendation? So I think if you look at many countries, you end up with a system where you have like both an immunization specific and uh, an integrated system as many of you actually have indicated. Um, and this is just an example of a system where you have multiple sources of immunization data where in this country, they use uh, not just totally separate uh, paper reports, uh, but also the tools that are used at higher level, uh, for example, DVDMT versus DHIS2. Um, and that is, of course, not an ideal situation. It's maybe this transition from uh, parallel to integrated, but right now, a lot of countries have like a parallel system with need for double entry, um, with, which of course needs to be avoided, we think. So we as WHO, we don't want to do advocacy or we don't want to say, uh, use this system or, do, or use that system. So we don't advocate for any specific system. Um, but what we say is that if a national system is supported by the MOH, uh, then EPI should align. And we have minimum standards for that. Um, so at this point, maybe uh, can I hand it over to Karim to kind of uh, explain more about how we try to do that within uh, the health collaborative and with DHIS2 in specific. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Jan. So I hope you see me. Okay, let me switch. We see your thumb. Ah, okay. <laughs> so anyway, while well, I'm trying to fix that issue, um, WHO uh, and the Health Data Collaborative have developed a set of uh, uh, guidelines that are available online and we are going to, to share at the end with the Annex all the link to access uh, those guidelines. And uh, um, among those guidelines, you can see the one in blue is a guidelines for immunization program manager about all the health uh, um, data that you can find at the health facility level. So um, uh, it has been a very collaborative work and uh, this guidelines is to be used if you have an electronic system or if you don't have an electronic system as uh, Jan said. Now, um, considering that a lot of countries are using the HIS2 system. WHO has developed a system, um, a set of applications that can be applicable for the HIS2. So countries can um, uh, uh, go. Hello. Country can download a set of application, uh, set of material to uh, customize their own uh, national DHIS2 instance, for example, with all the recommended data element and indicator for uh, DHIS2. So maybe we can move to the following slide, please. Okay, so uh, among those guidelines, you can see the first slide is um, about the data quality review. So you know, uh, to uh, um, usually within the EPI program, you do a lot to improve the, the, the quality of data. 
and uh, you used to do a data quality uh, survey, data quality audit, etc. So there is a full set of um, guidelines that is done how to conduct integrated data quality review. So uh, this you can do only, uh, uh, you apply those recommendations only for the EPI uh, data elements, or you can do it on an integrated way with all the uh, uh, other data elements like uh, maternal and child health, malaria program or TB program. So uh, these uh, uh, guidelines, you can do it if you do it manually or also if you have a DHIS2 instance, you can download uh, an application that will help you to generate all those uh, data analysis. And uh, uh, it's easy bit to work and you can uh, then uh, add customized application if you want to look specifically on some data, etc. And we can move to the next slide, please. So uh, we have been um, uh, talking about the DHIS2. Uh, so you can see in this uh, um, map is, is a trial map. And uh, we can see that many, many countries are actually using uh, DHIS2 uh, for collecting the uh, health data. And you can see that in some country, uh, uh, there is DHIS2 contains some uh, immunization data elements. And in some country, the country use only DHIS2 to uh, collect and manage their uh, immunization data. In some country, DHIS2 is present, contains some immunization data, but still the EPI program uh, use their own uh, parallel system, their own immunization system, information system to have all the data. So uh, it was really, you know, where this idea came as DHS2 could be an opportunity because it's, it's present in a quite a large number of, number of countries now, between 60 and 70 uh, Ministry of Health are using it. Uh, so it's why some effort have been done to uh, develop uh, material for DHIS2 that will really uh, consider all the requirements from WHO. Next slide. So now we can look into detail for what has been developed for immunization module. So uh, within um, uh, DHIS2, uh, each program have worked, like the malaria program, the TB program have worked and developed its uh, module. For immunization, we have worked all together to develop uh, four different components. And we are going to see component by component. It was very specific to immunization. You know, immunization program, we have a very long history of uh, using information and we used to have our own way of analyzing the data. And it's why we develop uh, the DHIS2 application was really tailored for immunization to be able to answer to all the needs uh, from immunization program. So we are going to, you see there is four uh, elements. So we are going to see on the next slide, uh, one by one element. So please. Uh, so the first uh, uh, application that exists is uh, what we call the dashboard. So it's a standard uh, WHO DHS2 immunization app that includes all the dashboard. So first of all, there is a list of all the recommended data elements that uh, a program uh, should have. And those data elements, uh, they will uh, allow you to produce different set of indicators to produce immunization coverage information for each vaccine based on your national schedule. So, and this, uh, each time you introduce a new vaccine, you can uh, add this new vaccine, for example. You will also be able to uh, produce uh, the dropout rate, for example, for all the vaccine you have in your country. Also, the data elements recommended by WHO include uh, supply and cold chain uh, information. So, for example, the stock on uh, each antigens and uh, also the, the temperature monitoring, all of that. You have also the, comp the element on the adverse event following immunization, the IFI. You can uh, 
uh, also considered the monitoring of your vaccine session and all of that. So this constitutes a full list of data elements. You have all the indicators and you can see some of the uh, dashboards that could uh, be made. And those dashboards are made, you know, by level with the DHIS2. So when you have the central program, you will see uh, all your country. And if you go down to the district, it will be all the information for your own districts that will be made and will help you to take, uh, to monitor the program and take some decision. We have put a note that at the moment, the, the, um, applications that are available do not have uh, information for surveillance data and for uh, campaign uh, data, but this is ongoing and is coming, uh, I guess, uh, for next year, uh, more dashboard will be available. Next slide, please. So after we talk about the data quality app, and uh, these are examples for immunization. What are the output of this application where you can really drill down and look at the uh, quality uh, components? So, of course, if you have uh, uh, more pentatry, uh, more children vaccinated for pentatry than penta one, but you can. Uh, uh, look at really, really details and the advantage of that application is, of course, is gi giving you um, a full report uh, on all the elements that we use to, to consider for quality. So, of course, the timeliness, the completeness, internet consistency, the outliers, external consistency. And it can give you this report for the national level or for at your district level as well. And you can comment on the report. You can use that application before going for supervision because it will allow to uh, specific places with uh, the uh, outliers or data major data quality issue. So it's very friendly application and is already in use in many countries for more than a year. And the second version is actually being developed uh, based on all the recommendations from the country using it. Next slide, please. So this is a very specific one for immunization. The first one we saw it was standard dashboard and every program has it. But for immunization, this you will immediately recognize some of the very, uh, some of the graphs that you, uh, uh, that you like and uh, you know thanks to the HIS2 you can change uh, the, the graph and you can turn it to a map for example if you put all the GIS coordinates and uh, this is very very useful for uh, a program manager to really identify area where to intervene. Can we go to the next slide? And this is an application that actually uh, people call it all the DVDMT functionalities and it was really developed for uh, immunization program. And I'll spend a bit of more time on that. Uh, in immunization program, we used to do, for example, monitoring shots, and this is very important. So uh, you can see on the right side of the screen that uh, you, you have your monitoring shot, you put your target population, and uh, you uh, accumulate the number of uh, children vaccinated. Let me take one minute to speak about the denominator. Uh, within the HIS2, uh, the WHO recommendation is that you can use the dashboard for with two denominators, so official denominator and the programmatic uh, denominator. So it's a way to customize the DHIS2. And then when you choose your denominator for your monitoring chart, you can use either the national uh, official uh, denominator or your uh, um, programmatic denominators. This is, of course, feasible if the country have a, a denominator target for the district or target for the health facility as well when available if you have done an enumeration. So this is a monitoring chart. You will recognize at the bottom the chart with a, with a cross and the red, yellow, and green color. This is a way we classify our district for the red approach, for example, with we put, where we put coverage and dropout together. So this is a, 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 a really a visualization that program manager uh, used to have in the DVD-MT and we uh, managed to keep it uh, as an output of the immunization analysis hub. And each time you can either extract the, the, the graph one way, you can, uh, if you put your mouse, you will 
quickly see the name of the district, the number, so it's quite uh, uh, easy to use and informative. Next slide, please. So uh, rapidly, just to say, we, we show you, you know, the, this uh, um, uh, three different uh, apps that are already existing. And actually there is an another function uh, that is included within the immunization analysis app is a way to uh, export your data and to submit uh, your uh, report. Uh, you mostly report on the RIM format. So it's like that you can submit it to uh, uh, WHO, for example, every month. So this is a function that exists already. So now, uh, this is a work that is being done and implemented in many countries. We wanted just to highlight quickly the other area where um, uh, all together the partner are developing new features within the HIS2. So there will be uh, new guidance for the transition, for example, for countries who wish uh, to transition from parallel system to DHIS2. So our immunization program, what are the steps, how to do and manage the transition and the integration within the HMIS program. And there is a lot of work that is uh, done on the birth notification module. And uh, this will be uh, linked with the work done on uh, civil registration, for example, a vital statistics. And there will be a link with electronic immunization registry. There is uh, a new DHS2 Android application that has been released in September. And uh, the new functionality of this uh, allow actually to develop an electronic immunization registry. So this is being processed now and will be released for country to pilot it uh, from next year. There is a uh, huge work as uh, uh, Yanev said, on the surveillance, so uh, both the integrated, the aggregated surveillance and the case-based surveillance, so there will be new features from the HIS2. The same for campaigns, for uh, monitoring campaigns, interoperability with LMIS, and uh, the research ongoing training. So it's just to say that, uh, based on all the requests made by the countries that are using the HIS2, new features are coming, and we just decided for today to show you what was done for aggregated, but work is being done also for uh, non-aggregated data. Next. Yes, next are some ideas for improvement. Yeah. Before we go there, maybe uh, I can take uh, some of the questions that have been asked in the Q&A, so let me just uh, address a few of these. So Dr. Aji uh, uh, ma raises uh, the situation in Nigeria. So he said that, first of all, uh, the DHIS2 uh, currently doesn't uh, visualize coverage rates at the health facility level. Uh, just to say that this is not an issue uh, that is specific to DHIS2. So DHIS2, as Karin has said, actually does allow you to have several set of, sets of denominators. So you could have like a set of denominator that is kind of labeled um, health facility uh, operational targets and the other one um, national denominators or something like that. So it, it can be done just to say maybe that the problem here might be that at the health facility, it's really hard to come up with a meaningful denominator. So it might be um, a problem that is beyond actually um, the use of the tool or the, the choice of the tool. Then the other part, is on uh, the private and tertiary facilities that also vaccinate but uh, don't report because it's too time consuming for them for them to kind of actually make a paper report or another digital entry based on what they already have digital so i totally uh, think that that is indeed uh, something that needs to be solved so what i would say is that for tools that are out there for example electronic registries or if, if you think about uh, in india mcts or whatever that also generates the same data. I think we should think about building links, uh, interfaces. Um, for other tools, like if there's kind of private tools, uh, private software that people use in, in private facilities or hospital information systems, uh, it might be just a matter of kind of designing a good report for them that can be entered at the district level, for example, uh, into DHIS2. So I think it's most important to kind of uh, integrate that data, but if other people from other countries have different uh, experiences with that on how to do that, that would be uh, helpful. Uh, but what I would do is kind of try to solve that situation one by one um, and have like some kind of agreement between the district administration or in your case, the LGA administration and the hospital or the tertiary facility on, on how to enter the data. Um, so uh, Dr. Khalid Abubakar said that Nigeria 
use DHIS2 and DVDMT uh, for reporting. Um, but there's constantly discrepancies. I think that is normal. If you have two systems, you will have always discrepancies. So I think you're in this um, in the situation where you're transiting from one system to the other, and this is going to be a difficult uh, period. I think it would be best to kind of have that um, transitional period as soon as possible finished so that you can actually go to only using one system, which is less work and less discrepancies. Of course, that doesn't mean that the data is going to be correct. So you need then to start kind of verifying data, uh, maybe do things like uh, DQA uh, or kind of um, data reviews, uh, checking that the registers uh, are corresponding to what people report in the DHS instance and, and things like that. Uh, but the consistency of two different platforms is really hard to maintain because people will often uh, refuse to enter data in one and the other in the same, with the same quality and, and care. And I think actually they're, they're right to, uh, to do that. Um, so answer that. Um, what is the scope of reporting on HMS? Asked uh, Dr. Abid Hussain. Uh, so as we said, this can be really uh, very broad. It can include everything uh, from vaccines to diseases, uh, but coverage is always there. Um, and Dr. Mustafa uh, Mahmoud, uh, that's the last question I maybe answer for now, asked whether it's possible to integrate all these systems uh, into one so that there's only uh, one that can be host, ho housed in one central area. Um, I think there's two possibilities to that. Uh, either you try to put as much information as you can in one system, which is a possibility, or if you really have kind of more specialized um, tools, for example, for LMIS and surveillance, the other possibility would be to construct either interfaces so that you can pull data within one of the systems or actually have a dashboard application that actually draws data from the different applications so that you can actually compare the data and triangulate it. So it's not always necessary even to only have one system if you have a few specialized systems and the only thing you need is kind of to look at data together. You can also do that through kind of dashboard applications. Um, so that being said, uh, let's just continue quickly with our ideas for improvement. Uh, and then we give the floor uh, to Dr. Samadhan uh, Debaje from uh, India to talk about HMIs in India. Then we'll take your uh, experiences. And please, uh, if you have an experience to share on all these issues that we have been discussing, uh, share them with us in the Q&A of the Zoom, and then we'll kind of pick that up from there and we give you the floor in a minute. So the first uh, ID, Karin, do you want to talk to this, is to have yeah. harmonized monitoring systems? Okay, so the, the first ID is uh, uh, so to have harmonized monitoring systems and uh, to avoid, uh, of course, you know, duplication uh, because this is, uh, is really heavy workload and is also costly and uh, not sustainable. And uh, after, you know, to avoid the, the, the double entry, will uh, reduce the risk of uh, data quality error, for example, and also will increase uh, completeness uh, in, uh, in one uh, system. Uh, the, the alignment is very important between all the uh, elements that are recorded. And uh, be, uh, if there is different database, et cetera, so it's very important to, to take everything together and to look which elements are needed and remove the duplicative and to remove the non-used uh, 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 data. So uh, after it's important also to build links, you know, uh, it's very important to understand that um, uh, not one system can do everything. So you will need different systems. Some systems are very good in uh, uh, collecting, uh, visualizing the data. Some other systems are good for managing uh, data. So for example, uh, uh, HMIS will not do LMIS. So for the logistics, you can have your own system, but it's important to connect elements. And to make sure that uh, people can can triangulate or use the data from one system to the other system so that system are interoperable uh, when you do this harmonization of monitoring system uh, you can decide for example to to do a, a a transition from uh, two system to one system and this have to be taken uh, very carefully you have to to plan uh, different steps 
And one uh, of the steps, for example, is to make sure that the system, uh, you are, the harmonized system you are going to use, keep all the historical data, for example. So uh, a lot of countries have managed to transfer all the historical data so they can, in the new system, so they are able to see uh, the trend over different years. For example, it's good when you harmonize the monitoring system uh, to, to make a full review of the system at the point of time, but to plan for regular uh, checks that you can include if you have new vaccine, for example, uh, or if you can include if there is new health facility so that this new system you are choosing is quite uh, uh, flexible and uh, able to evaluate with the time. So this was the first idea. Thank you. Go ahead. So the second uh, uh, idea is about dashboard. So uh, you know to have all those data, but if you don't use it, it's not really uh, useful. So uh, important effort have been done for visualization of uh, data. So this dashboard can help you to visualize simple data element in a graph, in a map, in a chart is very powerful. Also, those dashboards can be used for triangulation of data uh, from different systems. And those dashboards can be used at different levels. So from the central level, uh, uh, or uh, after you can go down to the district, you can also do specific dashboard on uh, immunization or you can compare immunization and uh, antenatal health. There is a new question now about uh, dashboard at a health facility level. So this uh, can be uh, done uh, if you have uh, more and more health facility now equipped, so they can have a, a IT uh, a computer and internet, so you can have specific dashboard at the health facility level. Of course, you have to see what is important at the health facility level. Not every health facility have a specific target, so you have to adapt to dashboard. And eventually, at the health facility level, you can also include more operational data that are used for the operation of this health facility. Next. So um, and another idea is uh, to use uh, uh, to enhance the supervision. We usually do a lot of supervision and but is to take opportunity during the supervision to uh, bring them uh, uh, you know, report to do this retro feedback on the data they have submitted to give them information on how they did for their performance compared to others or compared to their own performance in the past. So sometimes if you have uh, a possibility from the district, for example, you can uh, print uh, uh, the, the different reports. So either the performance report, the monitoring chart, and you can bring this to the, to the facility you can also, uh, before the supervision, work on the quality, on assessing the quality of data. And then with this data quality report, you can go to the facility and quickly uh, identify era, errors that you can correct. So this is uh, uh, also leading to uh, bringing more visualization when you do those uh, mostly uh, review meetings, for example, using the chart. Uh, showing progress. This is very uh, powerful and uh, as soon as you use more that data, all the stakeholders will be uh, more engaged and uh, uh, put more attention to the data that is reported and hopefully the quality of that data will improve as well. Next ID. Um, so we have those uh, uh, data quality uh, review uh, reports. Uh, is, uh, is, is quite important, you know, but also to, to, to do it at each level and on time. You know that uh, you have a period where you can validate the data. There is different mechanism to validate the data. So it's good to uh, use that report on time before the period to close the, 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 the before the window uh, that is allow you to correct the data is closed. And by really doing that, you know, as soon as you have entered all the data from past month in the district, then you can generate that report, you can discuss, you can compare with other uh, uh, program area and um, 
country have really uh, love it, you can uh, call the specific health facility uh, saying that, listen, last month you reported 1,000 people vaccinated while usually an average you vaccinate 200 children every month. So quickly, you will see that it will become very interactive and you can correct the data on time and, uh, uh, and improve the overall quality of data. Next slide. Um, we have a new uh, question that is coming up and countries that have uh, uh, successfully integrated uh, uh, the immunization monitoring system in one system. Actually, they find themselves with a lot of that immunization data manager uh, without much to do uh, based on the previous job because, you know, they didn't spend that much time entering the data or correcting or doing this uh, manual aggregation and all of that. So new technology have really given uh, those data manager more time. So a lot of questions are happening in this country on what to do with data manager. And we have a bit of uh, to together to re reinvent the role of a data manager. And actually, uh, countries are very excited and they are like, okay, instead of just entering the data or verifying a lot of time for the quality, now we can really use that data. And data managers are doing a lot on the, uh, producing of, uh, those dashboards and they are uh, helping to interpret the data as uh, they can quickly uh, highlight uh, some uh, uh, area for improvement of the performance. So it's a huge reflection that you will have to, to do as well uh, and think how you have the whole flow of information that is uh, changing and how to, to make the best of the people who are uh, working uh, in this information system. I think we are done. Yes. Uh, we're done. Let me just answer a few quick questions that have uh, been asked before I hand it over to uh, Dr. Debaye. Um, so Abdullahi Umar uh, talks again about the challenges of DHIS2, I think, in Nigeria. So inability to generate coverage by health facility because there's, non -population, there's no population targets uh, by health facility. So we said actually that the tool can allows you to, to have like uh, specific targets for population, which can even be a different set than your official denominators if, if you want to do that. But it's really a question of governance on, on, how, to, um, on how to get there. Um, so it's really kind of more of a collaboration uh, governance issue, kind of the need for EPI or in your case NPH CDA to talk with the HMIS and, and have like this uh, uh, conversation going. Uh, another issue in the list is uh, the list of health facilities um, where you have different um, lists. Well, that's, of course, a very fundamental question uh, that supersedes also the DHIS2 or HMIS. Um, a, a clear list of health facilities is actually a very good building block for any uh, health information system and actually for your uh, health system as well. I know you have a lot of health facilities in Nigeria, uh, maybe 25,000 or something, and the number varies, but getting that list clear and probably kind of GIS map them, everything is actually quite important. Um, uh, Alan, Alan C um, asked about um, how can we get uh, the app for DHS2 for immunization or, and how can we optimize it in our country? So I'm going, going to refer to Karin for that. And a follow-up question, can we get online training in DHS2? So I'm going to refer to Karin to talk about the both questions because she has been involved in kind of uh, helping with the rollout, especially in, in Afro uh, for this, um, for this uh, app. For this, so for this uh, app, uh, you will see at the last slide we are going to present to you, there is a link uh, to the WHO website where you will find these uh, uh, guidelines on the uh, health facility data analysis and also a link with uh, all the, the uh, application materials how to, uh, to download this app. You know that DHIS2, for example, is uh, uh, open source, so all the coding, programming information is uh, available, freely available. So having said that, it's not because it's freely available that can be done just like that. And uh, uh, you need to, to, to work with the DHIS2 team in your country 
to make sure that things are done properly because it's a problem of compatibility of version, etc. It's, it's still it's quite easy to do it, but it still has to be done by uh, DHIS2 specialists. There is, a, for uh, countries that are supported by Gavi, there is a system of uh, technical assistant deployment with the University of Oslo ISP that is rolling, uh, that is going on. So uh, we also put it as an annex uh, um, a presentation on that so you can see if your country is eligible uh, or not and uh, in any case you know this work can really happen if the um, the uh, EPI program is working very closely with the HMIS DHIS2 uh, program uh, to make sure you know those uh, um, those uh, uh, applications are installed. And beyond that, you know, it's, it's not just to have the application in, in DHIS2, but it's really a point of time where you take uh, uh, time to really look at the recommendation, at the definitions, at the norms and standards for all the indicators. Sometimes uh, DHIS2 have been developed without the involvement of EPI program and the definition of our EPI indicators is not correct. So take time and WHO country office uh, take a, a huge role in that. Take time to look at all the definition, at all the requirements, and uh, this will be a good opportunity to make sure the quality of the output of DHIS2. Then uh, in DHIS2, generally, uh, there is some training opportunity. So just go to the DHIS2.org uh, platform and you will see a system of academy online or uh, academy in, uh, in situ. There is also in-country academies. There is quite uh, a lot of uh, uh, programs that are going on for, for, for this. I just wanted to come back uh, one minute on the connectivity issue. If possible, um, or after India experience, Jan, should I answer uh, to that? Let's, let's first maybe have the India experience and then we come back to, to that okay. also. Uh, so we're going to connect with uh, uh, Dr. Debaje. Dr. Debaje is actually a WHO scholar uh, in the IMA uh, course, uh, and he actually had a very nice uh, SWOT analysis, so week two assignment around the Indian HMA. So we asked him to actually present it here. Uh, during the webinar. I also want to say that for people after that, if you also would, would like to present your situation, we know there's great experiences to share from, from Bangladesh, uh, from Ghana, uh, from other countries. Uh, so please don't be shy, put it in the Q&A. I see also that there's a few, hand, few people with their hands raised, so I can actually also maybe call on them to, to present after Dr. Debaje. Uh, Dr. Debaje, can you hear uh, us? Can you speak? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jan and Karen. Uh, I will not take so much time uh, and just uh, for proceed with my presentation regarding HMIS assessment for India. Uh, it was a nice experience as uh, we know in India 2008, we have launched HMIS for uh, health uh, monitoring and evaluation portal. Uh, the most important benefit, I will directly go to the benefits of the system because as we know, the main data, uh, data uh, uh, collected is from the field of worker and it goes through very yes, strict uh, data check and validation processes which are on place and uh, ongoing very well. So most important benefit is that from the last 10 years we have been evolving for this system with uh, all uh, uh, excellent availability of logistic and excellent uh, availability of trained manpower and some data freeze mechanism and dashboard. You are using a dashboard from last 10 years and we are evolving on this issue uh, day by day. Uh, but uh, during using this system, we have we are facing some challenges. As still, we are using some paper-based format, paper format which are having multiple uh, indicators and multiple formats at the same time, which are to be filled by the field-level health worker, uh, which, uh, which is A &M. So there are sometimes data entry error or data duplicity or wrong data or incomplete data may be entered in this paper format. And uh, as you know, this is the this is not a real-time database because A &M has to fill and she has to carry the data to block. So uh, we cannot uh, see it as a real-time database. And if some manpower changes, we get the training of HMIS in the field and in the block and the district or at the, any level, the untrained manpower, cha uh, change manpower, or untrained manpower, it will, uh, it will uh, create a huge challenge for us. And there are sometimes uh, network or administrative errors as this data which is collected at the district, sub-district and national level, which is freeze and validated. But sometimes it takes too much time. In India, sometimes it takes one and two years to report, uh, to show the finalized report. So there are two types of reports, such as the live reports and standard reports. Uh, this is the main challenge 
So as this data cannot be utilized for uh, any planning uh, near near planning, uh, and it will be very late to plan on this data based on this data after one and two years. And also in the system, also in HMI system, there are many health facilities which are not included, uh, such as medical college and private health private health institution. So uh, overall, when we see the HMIs of India, it is a very nice system, but, but we have to move forward. Uh, as as in discussion, uh, we are hearing that uh, multiple systems are running in some countries, but at some point, point, we have to merge this system and use a single system. And as in India, we see HMIs is a very strong system, and we have been using and training uh, people from last 10 years. So why not evolve this system to better? So uh, we have a very good future and way forward to HMIs for India. As we are launching, uh, as Government of India is launching Unmold tab, that is AM online uh, tab, which is an application based. Uh, based. Uh, with this app, with incorporation of HMIs, formats, HMIs, data, you can use this uh, to enter the immunization, specifically field for immunization directly from the field. And that data actually, uh, if, if merging with the MCTS platform, MCT data is same, including in the it is a merge with HMIs, you can simply convert data into a service planning delivery tool, service planning tool for EPI. We will take the dual use, we can, uh, the, the NM can draw the indicator. And uh, yes. Uh, second uh, way forward for India is uh, we have all the system in place, but data validation and check, we are doing it, but log and records maintaining in the API system is not till date. So we can improve on that with regular log and data, rec uh, uh, data record making. Uh, third important thing is that in way forward, we see all the health facilities, as India is a growing developing country. So many new health facilities are emerging, many new health medical, medical colleges are being uh, set up. So. Uh, regular health facility mapping through GIS is very much important. So we can assess the situation, what is the situation and what is the percentage of service provided by this institution. So we can analyze the system or uh, the institution head will come to know what is the situation of immunization in his, his or her area. So that is a very uh, uh, important thing we can do. And yes, uh, as this is a uh, run under the NHM, which is a uh, uh, government program, but all the staffs are on contextual basis. So there is attrition of staff in various levels. So various staffs are changing. So regular training of staff is a very big issue and we have to set up an institution. We are in some state, we have state institute of family welfare and planning at place to train this kind of staff. But at district level also, and at some block level also, we have to plan for regular training. So uh, yes, in future, and some states are performing as, as we discussed in presentation, previous presentation there, MCTS is also in some state at, uh, at phase uh, ongoing. So instead of uh, running two parallel systems, we should merge these MCTS with the HMIs. In some state, we are using a different level, but that data can be used and utilized for the benefits of uh, our improving HMIs, not to replace the HMIs. And I would like to go for uh, what are the, from my experience, what are the tips I can uh, give to the district officer to leverage their HMIs in their country. First, first, first is plan for induction training with ensuring that all logistic and IC materials are in place. Second, we have to, as a district official, uh, we cannot depend on anybody that if the data enter is correct or not. As in, in India, we are doing that at least one to five percent data from the source register we check through field visit to dress reuse, also monthly meetings. We uh, call them with the monthly meeting, uh, their register, ask the register or form and cross check it. So cross checking the data for its completeness and validation and accuracy is very much uh, important. Second, the most important uh, issue which we face during uh, uh, HMIS uh, operating is that data transfer because as in current position in many countries there is uh, no data, I mean no connectivity, network connectivity. So it is very difficult for them to enter the data in online form to force them to join through the network uh, through uh, online portal system. So they have to do the paper. They have to use the paper. In that situation, we have to do the data transfer. Data transfer from paper to uh, the online system. So it is very much important to check and cross check that data for any transfer error. And yes, ultimate goal is to triangulate the data for disease prevention and uh, uh, management purposes. So triangulation of data very, very much important for a district officer. And yes, after uh, doing all the HMIs review, data transfer, and checklist, the feedback has to be shared with the field level worker because she has to do, do her action, do uh, her action, and plan her activity according to the uh, feedback she received. So feedback mechanism and with the record keeping, 
as we share the feedback with the health worker it should be well recorded uh, so yeah uh, that is my experience from india thank you thank very you much. very much thank you very much dr that was very uh, uh, practical also i think and thanks for the tips in the end uh, a lot of people are congratulating you in the chat on that um, so thank you um, uh, just to say that if you have questions uh, for um, uh, for Dr. Debaje, uh, please also can you can put them in the Q and A, and we'll try to answer them if there's some kind of uh, uh, good questions that we would like to highlight. Karin, can I bring it back to you for the discussion on what to do if you don't have uh, online offline uh, issues? Yes. So uh, uh, regarding connectivity issue, uh, I mean, uh, Jan, you said it all is, is quite complex, but we can try to uh, to, to find different solution. Uh, first of all, you know, whatever system you use uh, uh, and you want to do uh, digitalization is uh, um, uh, you want to move to electronic system is because you have a lot of uh, advantages. And uh, uh, of course, you know, you have um, uh, requirements, you know, you, you need need internet access, which means connectivity, but also, you know, uh, um, funding to, to pay for it. Uh, you need uh, uh, an equipment, a smartphone, uh, a computer, and etc. So sometimes, you know, you are waiting for uh, you, the whole area or the whole country to, to meet those uh, requirements. But sometimes, you know, country move step by step and they, they use a kind of uh, uh, hybrid system system where digitalization can happen at different level based on the uh, on the on the uh, connectivity availability and etc so uh, you have not like to wait, you know, the, 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 the moment where everything will be perfect everywhere to try to, to move. And a country have moved, you know, uh, going from national level to uh, digitalization at the uh, regional level, then at the district level. And sometimes they move now to the facility level. And what is important is that you have the whole design that is clear and uh, you are not duplicating effort and uh, you move gradually. Uh, another uh, area is that uh, now uh, for um, uh, many uh, digital system, at least for DHIS2, you have some offline uh, data entry capability. So if you were using um, uh, the Android application on a smartphone, you can you, you used to, to be able to do to enter your data on your smartphone and it was uh, stuck there and only when you were going to an area where you had a, a network, you could send the data. This was already available for Android and now is going to be available for uh, laptop for computer as well. So you will be able uh, to do this offline data entry. So this will minimize the cost. And um, after you can upload, you know, only once you have done all the data entry, and you upload at the last moment. So it's also a new area. And also, there is a lot of connectivity progress. Uh, uh, the, uh, there is some health facilities that are able to uh, enter all the data, for example, in a, in a tablet. And after all the, the mostly uh, aggregated report uh, is uh, compressed and is an equivalent of two or three SMS, it can be sent to the uh, national DHIS2 instant platform. So this is one way of really uh, minimizing the, the quantity of data you need. And then another way is a lot of uh, countries, for example, now that are starting to negotiate contract with uh, mobile phone providers or internet providers. So they have a, a, a whole, uh, uh, the whole needs for the EPI program or the HIS2 program, the HMIS, have been evaluated as they negotiate with uh, the uh, provider saying that all the data that going to the national DHIS2 um, uh, platform is negotiated at a very low price. So there is a lot of ways that are, are, are coming up, uh, different innovations that you can see what is applicable in your country. And uh, in any case, you know, by doing a careful planning step by step, you will be able to, to, to access to new technology and, uh, and to move forward. I have a, another, um, if I can answer just a question on the private facilities. Mm -hmm. yeah. Of yeah. course. 
so there was uh, several questions, you know, uh, how to make uh, private facility reporting. So this is, of course, you know, not only uh, reporting to via DHS2 or not, uh, and, and it's more general, but I wanted to, to give example of like uh, Burundi, for example, where they have a lot of private health facility who are reporting into the national uh, HMIS DHIS2 system. So it's all about uh, partnership between the, the Ministry of Health and the private facilities, but they, they gain some advantages. So uh, there is a contract, so uh, those private facilities receive a, a fridge, for example, receive the vaccine and all of that, and in exchange they report data, and they are allowed to report directly uh, from those health uh, private facility to the uh, national HMIS, that is a DHIS2 integrated platform. So it, it, I think is is really uh, going beyond the the information. Uh, system because it's kind of uh, general agreement that uh, the private health facility will have with the Ministry of Health, but it does work in some places. So we, we encourage you to, to share uh, experiences. And the last point I wanted to answer, I saw a lot of questions on, uh, yes, HMIS do not feel uh, the, the, the needs for uh, EPI program. And this is a, uh, is a big uh, problem because EPI program have specific needs in terms of data element of indicators, have also specific needs in terms of timeliness. And uh, uh, we know that some HMIS program uh, used to issue report only every three months. So this was really not good for EPI program. And uh, uh, we also uh, have problem of uh, uh, access, you know, to the to the data, to control the data, and all of that. Now that HMIS program have uh, gone through a huge evolution, they moved from you know just doing this annual uh, report or trimestral report, quarterly report. They really moved to that. They have uh, data that are available. Uh, on, I mean, almost uh, live data every month. And uh, uh, so now they are more seen as an opportunity. So EPI program are engaging with them. Now when EPI program are engaging with them, I would say uh, some uh, country did very well and it was a kind of giving, giving. So EPI program were asking, please uh, more flexibility and to incorporate all the data elements, including stock, for example, including new vaccine, including all. So they ask for that. And they ask also for access, of course, you know, to, to, to have the right to enter to the platform at different level and all of that. But then they said to the HMIS program, okay, we are going to give you something as well. And the EPI program have, you know, a huge history of fusing data and all those EPI uh, data manager in many countries, EPI focal point at different level. And they ask EPI focal point to help with uh, uh, HMIS effort and DHIS2 effort. So the data managers were using, you know, they used to uh, remind facility to report immunization data. So now those data managers were used to remind facility to report the whole HMIS data, for example. So it was a kind of giving, giving and a win-win situation for both EPI program and HMIS program. And in that case, you know, uh, everyone were, were progressing together. So Again, a uh, good example from, from you to come. Thank you, Karin. Um, so we have uh, 12 minutes left or 13 minutes left. Uh, we don't really have a lot of uh, proposals by people to kind of share an experience from their country. So at least not in the Q&A. Uh, there is one person, Abdulaziz, actually. Uh, you have your hand raised. Is that because you would like to propose something? If not, if other people, for example, from Bangladesh or other people that have like uh, great experiences with uh, DHIS2 or HMIS or integrated or want to talk about the challenges in Nigeria, for example, with the integration. Uh, you can also raise your hand and the next people who raise your hand, I will uh, call on you probably to then to talk in the next few minutes. Abdulaziz, you have your hand up. Do you want to uh, say something? No.
All right. Anybody else who would like to uh, share uh, an experience with uh, their uh, situation in the country? I had some people from Ghana, but I can't find them in the list. Uh, if not, we can also close the webinar a bit early, of course, there's no problem. But there's actually a few people who have raised their hands now. So there is uh, uh, Asigede. So I'm going to unmute you. Um, and then you can please uh, talk to us. Let me promote you to panelist. So Asegeda, are you with us? Can you talk? I think you have un you have muted yourself. Yeah, that's me. All right, please introduce yourself also. Okay, I'm a secretary from Ethiopia, Gambela. Thank you. So please go ahead. So what would you like to share? Yeah, uh, in our context, we are working in uh, the I mean, in the API activities. As you know, there are a number of uh, uh, challenges to collect the data and uh, compile data in different areas, especially in our context. Uh, we have a uh, number of things that can be submitted in different ways, especially in different organizations. So uh, uh, what would be the best way to collect uh, the data and increase the quality of uh, uh, such countries with uh, underdeveloped. Uh, As you know, uh, in our context, we don't have the capacity to import data in uh, the technological way. So uh, what, what would be the proposed way, for example, like India, there are a number of experiences that uh, are shown in the presentation. So uh, what would be the suggestions that our uh, data management will be in a good and divided way that would uh, be supportive to uh, the other countries is going to be uh, good. So this is my question. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Asegeda. So um, yes, in Ethiopia, there's of course a lot of things going on at the same time. So you already have I think an HMS for a long time. Now you're switching that to DHIS2. Uh, so that's of course a big project. Um, I, I'm not, in, I mean, your question is quite broad uh, in terms of like probably how to do that best. Uh, so what we saw with Ethiopia before is that one of the barriers in Ethiopia was that there wasn't HMS, but EPI wasn't allowed to have many indicators there. So there was only kind of the third dose of Penta and then a few other vaccines. Uh, and, and we saw that actually as uh, quite a big uh, issue for our program. Um, I think a lot of the um, a lot of the problems in, in Ethiopia probably uh, should be around kind of uh, HMS and EPI really sitting together and look at uh, program requirements uh, first of all, and then try also to institutionalize a bit of the review mechanisms at the lower level, at the WARADA level, at the at the subnational levels also. So for people to give feedback on that, I think. There's a lot of kind of ideas that were presented, so I think you, you can uh, probably take a, a few of them and, and try to implement them. But thank you for sharing. Uh, Dr. Uh, Ambrose Body, Yoni Ambrose Body, I see you have your uh, um, if your camera connected already. Would you like to share uh, your experience? Can you also then uh, introduce yourself? I'm trying to unmute you. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm Yonya Bode Ambrose, Ghana. I'm a disease control officer. Thank you. So we um, use the DIMS district health management information system to track our data. And for entering of reports, data management that has been centralized to um, from national, uh, regional district levels and the issue is it hasn't gotten to the facility levels yet because of um, uh, handling data 
data inconsistencies that may be generated. So at the district level, they manage data generally. And also uh, the challenge is using smartphones to assess the data system. That has been the challenge um, of which it has been, it is still on pipeline and is uh, um, unless uh, other advanced smartphones that can uh, be used to get access for suitable entry and others. Um, but, um, yes, thank you very hello. much. Thank you very much. So you have a few, uh, I think your main question is about uh, DIMS, which is used, but not entirely uh, uh, gotten to the lower level yet. So kind of the use at the lower level uh, and below the district level, is that is that right? Is that your main problem that you wanted to um, raise? Yes. Yes. Um, so, Hello. Uh, yes, we can hear you. Uh, Karin, do you want to uh, answer that? I didn't get properly. Can you recap? So, the DIMS has been introduced. As you know, in Ghana, kind of DIMS is slowly replacing uh, DVDMT or actually has replaced DVDMT. Now, what we hear uh, is that uh, DIMS is probably not entirely uh, very much used at the lower level. Yes. Yeah because of connectivity issues, is that right, uh, Dr. Ambrose Body? And also because, and also because uh, Dr. Body uh, also mentioned the use of smartphones, that that could be interesting, but it's not quite there yet. So maybe uh, any tips on kind of how to solve this uh, connectivity or kind of lack of access by the lowest level? Yes, so uh, in, in some country, what I have done uh, is uh, quickly, I have done um, uh, a quick uh, assessment of uh, uh, connectivity availability, both in terms of network and in terms of uh, funding uh, for each health facilities. And, and then they have done a, a, a plan, you know, as I started to, to deploy the, uh, either the smartphone or the tablet or the laptop or the computer only on the on the facilities where you know they, they, they were meeting the, the, the connectivity requirements and for the others they have really supported them uh, to have the, the paper form you know and not only the paper form at the health facility but at the upper level so if the data entry is made at the district they, they reinforce the capacity with more uh, data entry managers at the district level and also they put in place a mechanism to uh, rapidly uh, take the form back from the health facility to the district so this wa wa was done and you know uh, i remember one country they really had to negotiate with the donors uh, to say that we cannot just by clicking the finger like that says that all the health facility in same time would report we do uh, uh, data entry uh, in the uh, digital system in the same time. So they do a proper planning. So this was the first step. The second step is that uh, once you gradually move for the list of facilities where you have those connectivity issue, they, um, they are now trying to, uh, to, um, to use mainly uh, the Android application because it's requiring less connectivity. So uh, by using the last generation of Android application, they were doing the uh, entry offline and then they were moving the tablets uh, uh, once a month uh, uh, to the point where there was connectivity. So sometimes the supervisor were taking it and then the data was uploaded. I know also in Sierra Leone, they've developed a system with a kind of uh, barcode uh, PQR system where they transfer to the supervisor all the data to the uh, smartphone of the uh, supervisor and when the supervisor goes back to the an area with uh, connectivity they did like that but what is important is really to do a kind of very good detailed planning facility per facility and not just roll out uh, a computer everywhere in same time uh, this it's, it's not that uh, uh, easy to, to, to solve. So this was example from other countries. Thank you very much. Uh, we have only two minutes left and I don't think we can take uh, more uh, experience. We, sorry about that, uh, Dr. Abdul 
Majid, Abdulaziz and Jeff, I had added you to the panel, but I don't think we can uh, get to your uh, contributions. Sorry for that. Um, so we're going to finalize uh, the webinar uh, here in a few minutes. Just to say that, uh, again, um, your, um, all the resources and the recordings will be shared under tinyurl.com uh, IMA resources, and I'll put that in the chat as well. Um, there's a number of things there, and I will add a few uh, others uh, just to say that. Um, we also would like to uh, ask you to kind of rate uh, the webinar. If you can go for a final time to menti.com, use the code 787046 and tell us uh, how this webinar was for you. Uh, did it, was it relevant? Uh, did it help your understanding of the situation? And did it enable you to do something different in your job? Uh, just tell us quickly, we would uh, appreciate your feedback. And then finally also to say that, and I saw in the, in the, in the questions, there were a number of questions that were going more towards the uh, registry questions. For example, the e-tracker in Gambia was mentioned. Um, and also um, somebody else, I forgot the name now. Uh, but anyway, so we'll have uh, next week a webinar on other digital systems, so not uh, the HMIS, but more of the transactional systems like electronic immunization records, uh, registries, and um, uh, logistics management information systems. So that is next week's uh, webinar, uh, same place, same time. So on Wednesdays, uh, 11 o'clock uh, in Geneva time, uh, it might be a little bit later for you in Asia uh, or a bit earlier for you in uh, uh, West Africa. Um, but thanks you very, thank you very much for joining. Um, thank you all the panelists. Uh, thank you everybody who uh, presented um, and asked questions. Uh, thank you, Karin, also to, uh, to join me for this. Uh, and thank you, Vasiliki, for uh, sharing and, and uh, facilitating the meeting. Karin, do you want to say something final or Vasiliki? Yeah, just uh, thank you to, to everyone. I think is uh, a lot of questions are, are raised and we'll find opportunity to, to answer to everyone. And uh, continue working together is a strong community and uh, you have all the, the solutions, I'm sure. Thank you for your commitment and uh, talk to you uh, in another time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Okay. So I would also like to thank all of you, all, uh, Jan, Karin, for being here uh, for this uh, webinar, and of course all the participants for their questions and their comments. So see you again for the next webinar next week. Which is also going to be the last webinar. So thank you for yes. joining the series. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. Hi, Jeff.